Hey guys, what's going on? Wayne here. So look, one of the more interesting things about electric or battery construction powered equipment, at least to me, is that news about these machines really comes in waves. And that's mostly because announcements surrounding electric machines line up almost entirely with big trade show events that happen every few years, something like Con Expo or Bama over in Germany. But drilling down even further is that the timing is tied to trade shows because OEMs need splashy things to talk about at trade shows. And electric machines are still seen as futuristic and more importantly, techy and techie stuff plays well to boards and investors. Plus, while electric machines make great booth attractions, the majority of OEMs working on electric machines focus most of their actual time and energy on machines that actually generate revenue for them today. Namely, all those machines that are still powered by an internal combustion engine. But look, what if you were a machine manufacturer that didn't have a legacy built atop diesel-powered machines, and you didn't have millions of customers that you have to support who depend on those diesel powered machines. What if your company only made electric equipment? Well, in that case, you'd have a company like First Green Industries, which only makes and sells battery powered electric skid steers. More interesting, more than half of First Green's machine lineup is cabinless. It doesn't have a place for you to actually sit and all of its available machines can be operated via remote control. So suffice to say, there aren't many companies like this operating or doing business here in the United States. So why is First Green here? What are they trying to accomplish? And what are these machines like? What do you need to know about them? Let's dig in. So for starters, a few basics about the company. First Green is headquartered here out of North Carolina. They've been around for about six years. Now they don't make their equipment here. They actually make it in a factory in the Czech Republic and then they import the machines for sale here in the United States. And look, even though they occupy a niche segment of the skid steer market here in the US, First Green say they have steadily seen increasing demand and increasing market share. Now some of that is due to the same reason that all compact machines are seeing similar increases their tool carrier versatility. Now the compact size of a skid steer combined with all the tools you can attach to them make them very useful machines to have. And that goes for any brand of skid steer you might be talking about. But when you make a skid steer electric, you increase its versatility even further. When you get rid of that diesel engine, that means you can now take this machine and safely operate it indoors, or you can operate it in a semi-open space like an arena, a shed, or a barn. And you can do that with no fumes and no noise. Now kind of extrapolating all of that out a little further, First Green feels very strong about its future because it feels like it makes the most versatile skid steers on the market. Skid steers that have high lift capacities, strong hydraulic attachment support, and the ability to operate in any environment thanks to that battery power. The company says another major factor to the increased demand it has seen has been customers looking to save money on fuel and maintenance. Now that is a fairly typical benefit talking point for electric machines from all brands. It's one we hear very often, but First Green says that they have seen that bear out. Eliminating the need to factor in fuel costs to job bidding is very attractive to contractors, while reduced maintenance costs make these machines very attractive to rental houses. Now let's get a little bit into the lineup here. First Green Electric Equipment is divided into four lines. The Elise line of skid steers, the Elise CBL line of cabinless skid steers, the Rocky line of cabinless low profile skid steers, and finally the Mini Z. Now that's a stand on mini skid steer and the company's only tracked machine. Now the Elise line is the most traditional machine lineup that First Green offers. This is the one with a cab that can be optioned as enclosed or open. Moving on to the Elise CBL, that line removes the operator station entirely and it's aimed specifically at remote control applications where you still need a standard hinge pin height. The Rock Eat line further specializes the cabinless design by reducing the overall height of that machine and that makes it a perfect fit for mining applications where the machine needs to duck in under low clearances to get to work. Now the Elise and the CBL lineups are both comprised of three models each, offering 1500, 
2,000 and 2,600 pounds of lift capacity with hinge pin heights ranging from 120 to 144 inches. Now moving on to that third traditionally sized skid steer lineup, the Rock Eat line is limited to two models and those offer 1,500 and 2,600 pounds of capacity. One thing to note on the Rock Eat line is that even though they have that low profile design for low clearances and mining applications, those machines still boast 130 inches of hinge pin height. So it's still a very capable load and carry machine. Now, as I mentioned before, the five available cabinless machines outnumber the three more traditional Elise skid steers with cabs. However, all first screen machines, including the Mini-Z stand-on skid steer, feature remote control as a standard option. And you can operate first screen machines via your smartphone, via an app, or through the Danfoss controller that first screen provides. So why is it important that first screen is kind of pairing remote control with its electric machines? Well, it's because a lot of places and applications where the electric skid steer is a good fit, those are also places where remote control would be a really handy feature as well. Interior demolition, ports, barges, sewer, waste environments, dusty environments like concrete and aggregate, etc. There's a lot of crossover there between interior and tight spaces where you don't want a diesel engine, but you also don't want an operator inside the machine. Now, like I mentioned before, First Screen knows the primary reason that people want a skid steer is all the versatility that it offers. And if a battery makes those more versatile, remote control makes those machines even more versatile when you stack it on top of battery power. Now, another important aspect to first screen machines is that they retain their auxiliary hydraulics. Now, some of the electric machines that we're seeing come onto the market today are going fully electric, and that means that they're replacing not only the engine with a battery, but they're replacing the hydraulics as well with electric motors and actuators. Now, First Green is continuing to power its tools with hydraulics in order to ensure that customers can continue to use any existing tools that they have in their yard. Not only that, but First Green really kind of doubles down on the hydraulic capability of these machines with a really thoughtful engineering approach to the way that the hydraulic pump and the drive motors of these machines kind of interact with one another. For instance, in a load and carry application, if you're pushing dirt or you're carrying a load, you can set that drive motor to high so that you can actually travel faster, but you don't need the hydraulic power, so you set the hydraulic pump to low. In fact, you can turn off the hydraulic pump completely if you don't need it. Or if you're in a spot where you need hydraulic power, but you need precise movement with like a specific type of attachment, you can set the pump to high and the drive motor to low. So one of the potential downsides of hydraulics on a battery powered machine is that if you really push the hydraulic capability of a machine with like a high flow tool, um, from those auxiliary hydraulics, that can really heavily decrease the amount of runtime that you're gonna get out of these machines. A machine that might be quoted at six to eight hours of the day, if you're gonna put a breaker on that on some of those machines, you might actually get two or three hours depending on how often you're using that high flow hydraulic tool. And because of that, First Green does offer what they call E-attachments. Now these E-attachments have their own electric motors built in and that electric motor ties into the battery power of the first green skid steer, and that allows for more efficient and optimized operation that uses less battery life than a similarly powered hydraulic attachment. So look, in the end, first green is actually offering the best of both worlds here. You can use your existing hydraulic attachments, or you can upgrade to an E attachment that's gonna give you more optimized operation. You don't really have to choose one or the other on one of these first green machines. Now, before we move further, let's address tracks. So why is the Mini Z the only tracked machine that First Green makes? Why not make an electric compact track loader as well? In the end, it has to do with battery runtime and how much power that tracks demand. Plainly put, CTLs require much larger or higher capacity batteries than skid steers in order to provide the same power and runtime. So as battery technology stands today, First Green's smallest battery can power one of its skid steers for a minimum of six hours. But if you were to make a CTL and you were to give it the same lifting capabilities and power as that skid steer, and then give it the benefit of a larger battery, it would still only get about half the runtime of the skid steer. So even with the larger battery, a CTL is only maxing out at about three hours of runtime as things currently stand. And First Green is not the only company I've heard about this uh, electric CTL engineering problem from. So look, until that CTL issue gets cracked, until they're able to get that runtime up to you know at least six hours, 
First Green will continue to focus on skid steers because the company only wants to offer machines that can comfortably make it through an entire workday before they need to be recharged. And that six hours, that's about the cutoff right now because six hours of continuous runtime, meaning if you, know, you were to run this machine, it would be able to you know, get six hours of continuous use before that recharge. That means that during a typical day, it should get you through eight hours because you're not running the machine the whole time. You're, you're stopping, you're getting out, maybe you're you know, letting it idle and electric machines don't idle because they don't have an engine. So six hours really equates to about eight hours of use in a normal or a typical workday. Until then, until the CTL can reach that same point, First Screen is gonna offer skid steers. Now, one final note before we move on from the whole issue around tracks, it should be noted that First Screen does offer a set of over the wheel tracks in both rubber and steel as an available accessory. So if there are applications where like, for instance, you're in snow and you would benefit from tracks, you can get these over the wheel tracks to kind of, you know, maybe a little bit bridge the gap. Now, of all the machines that First Green sells, it's the more traditional Elise lineup. Those are the machines with cabs that remain the most popular, unsurprisingly. But look, beyond being battery powered and remote controllable, there's plenty more to like about these First Green Elise skid steers. Now, for starters, there's quite a bit of attention to detail when it comes to visibility on these machines. The front glass is completely flat. It extends very low, allowing you to get a good view of the ground and the tool you're working with. Plus the side visibility was clearly, you know, a, a focus for the engineering team because it's excellent as well. The interior of the cab is comfortable with heat and AC plus creature comforts like Bluetooth audio. And earlier we mentioned that, you know, the, the up to, you know, 2,600 pounds of lifting capability and, and on the 1,200 models of the Elise skid steers, you're getting up to 12 feet of hinge pin height. So these are very, very capable machines that have been designed really well. Now, getting into the cab, the Elise skid steers also allow operators to choose their preferred operating pattern. You can choose between ISO and reverse H pattern. Plus, like every first screen machine, the Elise lineup is supported by the company's virtual garage, which allows you to monitor the operating status and health of your machine, the location of the machine, and it gives you the ability to remotely disable or limit the capability of the machine all from the app or from the website. All right, let's dig into the battery options across the first screen family of machines. Now, the company's desire to provide the capacity you need to work a full day is also the reason that the company offers multiple battery options for many of its machines. And because heavier use of attachments, like we mentioned earlier, greatly impacts battery life, First Green offers a few different battery options for each of its three full-size skid steer lineups. Now, those battery options are named Silad, Hopeki, I think I'm uh, uh, pronouncing that right, and flash battery. Now in each of the lineups, the smallest or 700 model machine, that machine is only available with one battery option. That's a 280 amp hour battery that can be flash or fast charged. Now, as we mentioned earlier, at minimum, First Green's smallest battery will provide you with at least six hours of runtime. First Green also offers a higher capacity 420 amp hour version of that flash battery. However, this high capacity flash battery is only offered on the 1200 models, the largest skid steers in each of First Green's lineups. Now, not only is this larger version of the flash battery the highest capacity battery First Green offers, it's also the most powerful in terms of energy delivery. It delivers just over 40 kilowatt hours, and that makes it a better fit for use with larger tools, the higher lift capacity, et cetera. Okay, so we're gonna move on from the flash battery, that's the red battery that we've been showing, to the Silad and Hopeki batteries. The big difference between the flash battery and the Silad and Hopeki batteries is that the flash battery is a lithium battery, while the Silad and Hopeki batteries are lead acid. Now, those two batteries have their own distinct advantage that we're gonna get into shortly, but the big difference between flash and the Silad and Hopeki batteries is that because the flash is a lithium battery, it actually has a much longer lifespan, about twice the lifespan of the Silad and Hopeki battery. So the lithium battery, the machines, you're gonna be able to keep that lithium battery inside that machine a lot longer before its usefulness or its lifespan wears out. Now, rounding out the battery options are the Silad and Hopeki batteries. Now, both of these batteries are available in two capacities, 240 amp hours and 400 amp hours. But both of those capacities are locked to the size of skid steer that you choose. So if you get a 900 model, you get the 240. If you get the 1200 model, you get the 400 amp hour battery. The difference between Silad and Hopeki is really twofold. The first is energy with Silad delivering 23 kilowatt hours 
and Hopeki delivering just over 38 kilowatt hours. The second is partial recharging. The Scilad battery does not support partial recharging, and that means when you need to recharge it, it has to be charged back up to 100% before it can get back to work. Conversely, the Hopeki can be charged to less than 100% before you put it back in the field. So let's say it runs out of battery, you recharge it, you get it back up to 70 or 80%, you can go back to work with it. But the Hopeki and Scilad batteries also offer a unique advantage of their own. They can be hot swapped. If you opt for a machine with either of these battery types, First Green says extra batteries can be transported in the bed of a pickup and you can swap them out in about 10 minutes. So here's what all of that means. The high capacity flash battery is the premium best kind of all around option. It delivers the most power or the most energy with the longest run time of all First Green batteries. Plus it has the ability to you know, fast charge it. Meanwhile, the Scilad and Hopeki batteries, they can't be fast charged but they can be hot swapped while offering options for lower and higher power delivery, allowing you to really tailor the machine to your tool carrier needs. And ultimately that's really my biggest takeaway from all of the battery options that you know, First Green offers. They really allow you to tailor one of these machines to the exact capabilities that you need out of them. Now, before we finish up, let's take a look at the Mini Z. That's First Green's stand-on mini skid steer slash mini track loader option. Now we'll start here with, with batteries. Really of, of all of the First Green machines, the Mini Z offers the most versatility in terms of really like picking the exact battery that you feel is going to meet your needs most specifically. Even though this is a tracked machine, First Green's smallest battery, the smallest Vanguard battery, is still going to give you eight to 10 hours of runtime on this machine. And this machine is small enough to fit through a standard 32 inch doorway, it has a lift capacity of nearly 900 pounds, and it is available with a demolition kit. So you can see how this machine is very you know, heavily tailored, and one of the big kind of applications they had in mind whenever engineering it was that interior demolition, which is becoming more and more of a need in the market. Plus, the Mini-Z can be configured with your choice of three different attachment plates. First Green's own kind of proprietary plate. You can also opt for a Bobcat M55 plate, or a Toro Dingo plate. So look, all in all, First Green exists to capture the growing demand for electric machines within an already hot, compact equipment segment of the overall construction equipment industry. And the core of the company's philosophy really is that by limiting its focus to battery powered equipment, that's gonna allow it to innovate faster. And it's gonna allow it to more effectively serve its customers, the customers that are actually buying into these electric uh, machines, it'll more effectively serve those customers than companies that are currently splitting their time between DC powered and electric equipment. And look, the company's machines feature impressive design and capabilities, but it's really that deep selection of battery options that have really impressed me since taking a look at this company. And that's because it's just evident that there's a lot of thought that has gone into providing customers with exactly the machine and capability that they need for a given application, while also trying to limit the downsides to battery powered machines today, most notably charging. And they have done that through options like higher capacity batteries, fast charging batteries, and even the ability to hot swap batteries while in the field. It's just a lot of versatility. Now, with all of that in mind, I would say First Green is definitely a brand to check out if you're considering getting into interior demolition for sure, or you're looking at maybe you know, adding some business in a space where a machine that doesn't include fuel and maintenance costs, a machine that's quiet and doesn't emit fumes would add to your business or to your business's versatility to kind of get into more areas and do more work. So what that all boils down to when it comes to First Green Industries is that despite the more splashy headlines that we get every few years from larger competitors, the First Green lineup of electric skid steers looks to be by far the most versatile, thanks to standard features and technology like remote control, thanks to that standard kind of capability on the hinge pin height and the lift capacities, but also that deep selection of battery options that really allow you to get the exact machine that you need. And kind of honestly, with hot swappable and fast charging, overcome a lot of the limitations with battery powered machines today. Plus you get the benefit of a company that is 100% focused on making, supporting, and innovating within just the electric machine segment rather than a company that's having to split its time between you know, the traditional diesel powered machines and electric machines. So if you're in the market specifically for an electric machine, it looks like First Green is definitely worth, uh, worth your attention and checking out. You can check them out at first.com.
green. All right, guys, well, that's it. That'll wrap up our video on First Green Industries. Hope this gave you some uh, information that you can use when researching your next machine purchase. If it did, if you found this helpful in any way, please do us a favor and hit that like button and uh, subscribe as well so that you're getting notifications uh, whenever we do new videos here on the Compact Equipment channel. Also, if you like this video and you want more great content about Compact Equipment, please check us out at our website at compactequip.com. Thank you guys for watching. We always appreciate your time. We'll see you in the next one.